As they greet each other, we await the arrival of Her Excellency, Dame Sandra Mason, and right on time, the Governor General of Barbados, Her Excellency, arrives here at the Bay Street Esplanade. As she alights from her vehicle, she is accompanied by her aide de Major Julia Dabreo. The Prime Minister and the Attorney General await Her Excellency. Escorted by the Chief of Protocol, Her Excellency takes her place on the dais. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. Our mistress of ceremonies for the afternoon is Sharon Marshall. Your Excellency Dame Sandra Mason, Governor General of Barbados, the Honorable Mia Amor Motley, Prime Minister of Barbados. The Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The Honorable Dr. Keith Mitchell, Prime Minister of Grenada. The Honorable Alan Chastenay, Prime Minister of St. Lucia. The Honorable Sean Richards, Deputy Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis. Members of the Cabinet of Barbados, including Dame Billy Miller and Dr. Clyde Masco. Members of the Governor General's Privy Council, Canon Noel Burke, Chairman of the Barbados Christian Council. Members of the Diplomatic Corps, judges and other senior members of the judiciary the head of the public service, permanent secretaries, and other senior public officials, including the commissioner of police and the chief of staff of the Barbados Defense Force, representatives of the private sector, including business, labor, and civil society, members of the media, fellow Barbadians here present from across the parishes and the constituencies of Barbados, together with those connected to us via the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen all, good evening. I'm Sharon Marshall, and welcome. 
I was going to bid you a warm welcome, but I think under the circumstances, you are already warm enough. This is a very special day in the life of our nation. We are here to witness the swearing in of those members appointed to the cabinet following general elections on May 25th. The Honorable Mia Amor Motley, QC MP, Prime Minister, Minister of Finance, Economic Affairs and Investment, on Friday, May 25th, subscribed to the Oath of Allegiance, the Oath for the Due Execution of the Office of Prime Minister, and now she will be received by the Governor General. The Honorable Dale Marshall, QC, MP, Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, who on Friday, May 25th, subscribed to the Oath of Allegiance, the Oath for the Due Execution of the Office of Minister, will now be received by the Governor General. Thank you. And now we proceed. The other persons to be sworn in as members of cabinet and parliamentary secretaries will subscribe to the Oath of Allegiance and the Oath for the Due Execution of the Office of Minister in the following order. Santia J. O. Bradshaw, MP, designated Minister of Education technological and vocational training, and leader of government business. I, Santia Josette Omara Bradshaw, do swear that I will be faithful and bear allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II her heirs and successors according to law, so help me God. I, Santia Josette O'Mara Bradshaw, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law, so help me God. I, Santia Bradshaw, Santiago Josette Omar Bradshaw, being appointed minister, do swear that I will, to the best of my judgment, at all times when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office for the good management of the public affairs of Barbados. And I do further swear that I will not on any account, at any time whatsoever, disclose the counsel advice, opinion, or vote on any particular minister or parliamentary secretary, and that I will not, except with the authority of the cabinet, and to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of Barbados, directly or indirectly, reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any documents communicated to me as minister, or any matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such, and that in all things, I will be a true and faithful minister. So help me God.
We also wish to acknowledge the presence with us here this afternoon of Chief Justice Sir Marston Gibson and our national hero, the right excellent Sir Garfield Sobers. George. So help me God. Congratulations to you, Mr. Prescott. Cynthia Y. Ford, JP, MP. Ms. Ford is designated Minister of People Empowerment and Elder Affairs. Yvonne Ford, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. I, Cynthia Yvonne Ford, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law, so help me God. I, Cynthia Yvonne Ford, being appointed minister, do swear that I will, to the best of my judgment at all times when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General for the good management of the public affairs of Barbados, and I do further swear that I will not on any account at any time whatsoever disclose the counsel, advice, opinion, or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary, and that I will not accept with the authority of the cabinet to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of Barbados, directly or indirectly reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any document communicated to me as minister or any matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such and that in all things I will be a true and faithful minister so help me God.
Pardes, congratulations to you, Ms. Ford. Kerry D. Simmons, MP. Mr. Simmons is designated Minister of Tourism and International Transport. I, Kerry Gerard Simmons, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I, Kerry Gerard Simmons, being appointed minister, do swear that I will, to the best of my judgment, at all times when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office for the good management of the public affairs of Barbados. And I do further swear that I will not on any account at any time whatsoever disclose the counsel, advice, opinion or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary and that I will not accept with the authority of the cabinet and to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of Barbados, directly or indirectly reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any documents communicated to me as minister or any matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such and that in all things I will be a true and faithful minister so help me God. I, Kerry Gerard Simmons, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. Congratulations, Minister Simmons. Dr. William F. Duguid, JP, MP. Dr. Duguid is designated Minister of Transport, Works, and Maintenance. Okay. I, William Fontelroy Duguid, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I, William Fontelroy Duguid, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law, so help me God. I, William Fontelroy Duguid, being appointed minister, do swear that I will, to the best of my judgment, at all times when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General 
or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office for the good management of the public affairs of Barbados. And I do further swear that I will not on any account at any time whatsoever disclose the counsel, advice, opinion or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary and that I will not accept the authority of the cabinet and to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of Barbados directly or indirectly reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any documents community to me as minister or any matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such and that in all things I will be a true and faithful minister so help me God Dr. Dugit, our congratulations. Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey D. Bostick, MP. I, Jeffrey Davidson Bostick, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law, so help me God. I, Jeffrey Davidson Bostick, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law, so help me God. I, Jeffrey Davidson Bostick, being appointed minister, do swear that I will to the best of my judgment at all times when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office for the good management of the public affairs of Barbados and I do further swear that I will not on any account at any any time whatsoever disclose the counsel, advice, opinion, or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary, and that I will not except with the authority of the cabinet and to such extent as may be required for the good share or contents of any documents communicated to me as minister or any matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such and that in all things I will be a true and faithful minister. So help me God.
Congratulations, Lieutenant Colonel. Colonel Bostick. Edmund G. Hinkson, MP. That I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors. According to law, so help me God. I, Edmund Gregory Hinkson, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, I am being lawfully performing the functions of that office for the good management of the public affairs of Barbados, and I do further swear that I will not on any account at any time whatsoever disclose the counsel, advice, opinion, or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary, and that I will not <laughs> without the authority of the cabinet and to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of Barbados directly or indirectly reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any document communicated to me as minister or any matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such and that in all things I will be a true and faithful minister. So help me God. Congratulations to you, Mr. Hinkson. Dwight G. Sutherland, MP. I, Dwight Gregory Sutherland, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs, successors, according to law. So help me God. I, 
Dwight Gregory Sutherland, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. I, Dwight Gregory Sutherland, being appointed, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General or any other person for the time being, lawfully performing the functions of that office for the good management of the public affairs of Barbados. And I do further swear that I will not on any account at any time whatsoever disclose the counsel, advice, opinion, or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary, and that I will not accept with the authority communicated to me as minister or any matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such, and that in all things I'll be a true and faithful minister. So help me God. Congratulations to you, Mr. Sutherland. Wilfred A. Abrams, MP. I, Wilfred Arthur Abrams, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. <laughs> I, Wilfred Arthur Abrams, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. I, Wilfred Arthur Abrams, being appointed minister, do swear that I will, to the best of my judgment, at all times when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office for the good management of the public affairs of Barbados. And I do further swear that I will not on any account, at any time whatsoever, disclose the counsel, advice, opinion or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary, and that I will not accept without the authority of the Cabinet and to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of Barbados, <laughs> directly or indirectly reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet, or the nature or contents of any document communicated to me as a minister, or any matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such, and that in all things I will be true and faithful minister. So help me God.
Congratulations, Mr. Abrams. Nice socks. <laughs> Ryan R. Strawn, MP. Mr. Strawn is designated Minister in the Ministry of Finance. I, Ryan Ricardo Strawn, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. I, Ryan Ricardo Strawn, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I, Ryan Ricardo Strawn, being appointed minister, do swear that I will, to the best of my judgment, at all times, when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General, or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office for the good management of the public affairs of Barbados. And I do further swear that I will not on any account, at any time whatsoever, disclose the counsel, advice, opinion, or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary, and that I will not, except with the authority of the cabinet, and to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of Barbados, directly or indirectly reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any documents communicated to me as minister or any matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such and that in all things I will be a true and faithful minister. So help me God. Mr. Strawn, congratulations. Marsha K. Cattle, MP. Ms. Cattle is designated minister in the Ministry of Economic Affairs. I, Marsha Kellyanne Cattle, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I, Marsha Kellyanne Cattle, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I, Marsha Kellyanne Cattle, being appointed minister, do swear that I will, to the best of my judgment, at all times, when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General, or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office, for the good management of the public affairs of Barbados. And I do further swear that I will not, on any account, at any time whatsoever, disclose the counsel, advice, opinion, or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary, and that I will not, except with the authority of the cabinet, and to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of Barbados, 
directly or indirectly reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any documents communicated to me as minister or any matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such and that in all things I will be a true and faithful minister so help me God. <laughs> Congratulations to you, Ms. Caddo. Cheryl Sandra V. Husbands, MP. Ms. Husbands is designated Minister in the Ministry of Foreign Trade. I, Cheryl Sandra Velda Husbands, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. Thank you. I, Cheryl Sandra Velda Husbands, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. I, Cheryl Sandra Velda Husbands, being appointed minister, do swear that I will, to the best of my judgment, at all times when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office for the good management of the public affairs of Barbados. And I do further swear that I will not on any account at any time whatsoever disclose the counsel, advice, opinion or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary and that I will not accept with the authority of the cabinet and to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of Barbados, directly or indirectly reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any documents communicated to me as minister or any matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such and that in all things I will be true and faithful. I will be a true and faithful minister. So help me God. Congratulations to you, Ms. Husbands. Colin E. Jordan, MP.
Mr. Jordan is designated Minister of Labor and Social Partnership Relations. I, Colin Everett Jordan, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. I, Colin Everett Jordan, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. I, Colin Everett Jordan, being appointed minister, do swear that I will be, I will to the best of my judgment at all times when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the duties of that office for the good management of the public affairs of Barbados. And I do further swear that I will not on any account at any time whatsoever disclose the counsel, advice, opinion, or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary, and that I will not accept with the authority of the cabinet and to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of Barbados directly or indirectly reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any documents communicated to me as minister or any matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such and that in all things I will be a true and faithful minister. So help me God. Congratulations to you, Minister Jordan. Charles McD Griffith, MP. Mr. Griffith is designated Minister in the Ministry of Housing, Lands and Rural Development. I, Charles MacDonald Griffith, do swear that I will faithful, faithful and bear true alliance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law, so help me God. I, Charles MacDonald Griffith, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, According to law, so help me God. I, Charles MacDonald Griffith, being appointed minister, do swear that I will, to the best of my judgment, at all times, when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office. For the good management of the public affairs of Barbados, I do further swear that I will not, on any account, at any time whatsoever, disclose the counsel, advice, opinion, or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary that they will not accept with the authority of the cabinet and to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of Barbados, directly or indirectly 
review the business of proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any document communicated to me as minister or any matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such and that I will at all times I will be true, true and faithful a true and faithful minister so help me God Prime Minister Shastane has had to take his leave we thank him for his presence here this evening Congratulations, Mr. Griffith. Adrian R. Ford, MP. <laughs> Mr. Ford is designated Minister of Youth and Community Empowerment. I, Adrian Ryan Ford, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me, God. I, Adrian Ryan Ford, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me, God. I, Adrian Ryan Ford, being appointed minister, do swear that I will, to the best of my judgment, at all times, when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General, or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office, for the good management of the affairs of Barbados. I do further swear that I will not, on any account, at any time, whatsoever disclose the counsel advice opinion or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary and that i will not accept with the authority of the cabinet and to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of barbados directly or indirectly reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any documents communicated to me as minister or any matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such and that in all things I will be true and faithful minister so help me God Congratulations, Minister Ford. Kirk D. M. Humphrey, MP. <laughs> Mr. Humphrey is designated Minister of Maritime Affairs and the Blue Economy. I, Kirk Duncan Matthew Humphrey, 
do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law, so help me God. I, Kirk Duncan Matthew Humphrey, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law, so help me God. I, Kirk Duncan Matthew Humphrey, being appointed, do swear that I, being appointed minister, do swear that I will to the best of my judgment at all times, when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General or any other person for the time being lawfully, for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office for the good management of the public affairs of Barbados. And I do further swear that I will not on any account at any time whatsoever disclose the counsel, advice, opinion, or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary, and that I will not accept with the, with the authority of the cabinet and to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of Barbados, directly or indirectly, reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any document communicated to me as minister or any matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such and that in all things I will be a true and faithful minister so help me God. Congratulations, Minister Humphrey. Indar A. Weir, MP. Mr. Weir's designated Minister of Agriculture and Food Security. I, Indar Anthony Weir, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I, Indar Anthony Weir, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I, Indar Anthony Weir, being appointed minister, do swear that I will, to the best of my judgment, at all times when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General, or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office for the good management of the public affairs of Barbados. And I do further swear that I will not on any account at any time whatsoever disclose the counsel, advice, opinion, or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary. And that I will not accept with the authority of the cabinet to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of Barbados directly or indirectly reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any documents communicated to me as minister or any matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such and that in all things I will be a true and faithful minister so help me God.
<laughs> Minister Ware, congratulations to you. Peter R. Phillips, MP. Mr. Phillips is designated Minister in the Ministry of Transport, Works, and Maintenance. I, Peter Ricardo Phillips, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to the law. So help me God. I, Peter Ricardo Phillips, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to the law. So help me God. I, Peter Ricardo Phillips, being appointed minister, do swear that I will to the best of my judgment, at all times when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office or the good management of the public affairs of Barbados. And I do further swear that I will not on any account, at any time whatsoever, disclose the counsel, advice, opinion, or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary, and that I will not accept with the authority of the cabinet and to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of Barbados, directly or indirectly reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any documents communicated to me as minister or any matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such, and that in all things I will be a true and faithful minister, so help me God. Congratulations to you, Mr. Phillips. John A. King, MP. Andrew King, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. I, John Andrew King, being appointed minister, do swear that I will, to the best of my judgment, and at all times when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office for the good management of the public affairs of Barbados. And I do further swear that I will not, on any account, at any time whatsoever, disclose the counsel, advice, opinion, or vote of any particular minister 
or parliamentary secretary, and that I will not, except with the authority of the cabinet, and to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of Barbados, directly or indirectly, reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet, or the nature or contents of any documents communicated to me as minister, or any matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such, and that in all things I will be a true and faithful minister. So help me God. I, John Andrew King, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to the law. So help me God. Congratulations, Minister King. K.S. McConney, designated Minister of Innovation, Science, and Smart Technology. I, K. Sharon McConney, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I, K. Sharon McConney, being appointed minister, do swear that I will, to the best of my judgment, at all times when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office for the good management of the public affairs of Barbados. And I do further swear that I will not on any account at any time whatsoever disclose the counsel, advice, opinion, or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary and that I will not accept with the authority of the cabinet and to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of Barbados, directly or indirectly, reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any documents communicated to me as minister or any matter come into my knowledge in my capacity as such, and that in all things, I will be a true and faithful minister. So help me God. Congratulations, Minister McConney. Lucille C. Moe. Congratulations, dear. I saw a shot of that. Ms. Moe is designated Minister of Information, Broadcasting, and Public Affairs. I, 
Lucille Cecile Mo, do swear that I'll be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I, Lucille Cecile Mo, being appointed minister, do swear that I will, to the best of my judgment, at all times when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office for the good management of the public affairs of Barbados. And I do further swear that I will not on any account at any time whatsoever disclose the counsel, advice, opinion, or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary, and that I will not accept with the authority of the cabinet and to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of Barbados, directly or indirectly reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any documents communicated to me as minister or any matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such, and that in all things I'll be true and faithful minister, so help me God. Minister Mo, our congratulations to you. Dr. Romel O. Springer. Dr. Springer is designated Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Technology, and Vocational Training. I, Romel Orlando Springer, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law, so help me God. I, Romel Orlando Springer, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs, successors, and successors according to law. So help me God. I, Romel Orlando Springer, being appointed Parliamentary Secretary, do swear that I will, to the best of my judgment, at all times when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office for the good management of the public affairs of Barbados. And I do further swear that I will not on any account, at any time whatsoever, disclose the counsel, advice, opinion or vote of any, other, of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary, and that I will not accept with the authority of the cabinet and to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of Barbados, directly or indirectly review the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any document communicated to me as parliamentary secretary or any other matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such. And that in all things, I will be a true and faithful parliamentary secretary so help me God.
our congratulations, Dr. Springer. And finally, Neil G. H. Rowe, MP. Mr. Rowe is designated Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of People Empowerment and Elder Affairs. <laughs> This role, do swear I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I, Neil Gabriel Hollis Rowe, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I, Neil Gabriel Hollis Rowe, being appointed Parliamentary Secretary, do swear that I will, to the best of my judgment, at all times, when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office for the good management of the public affairs of Barbados. And I do further swear that I will not on any account at any time whatsoever disclose the counsel, advice, opinion, or vote of any parli particular parliamentary secretary, and I will not upset with the authority of the cabinet or to such extent may as being may, may to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of Barbados directly or indirectly reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or content of any documents communicated to me as parliamentary secretary or any matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such, and that in all things I will be, tr I will be true and faithful parliamentary secretary, so help me God. Dame Sandra has had to do a lot of signing this afternoon. Congratulations to you, Mr. Rowe. Solemn oaths taken in the service of the government and the people of Barbados in the presence of the people. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cabinet of Barbados. Please stand. The Honorable Mia Motley, QC MP, Prime Minister. The Honorable Dale Marshall, QC MP, Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs. Santia Jo Bradshaw. Minister of Education, Technological and Vocational Training, and Leader of Government Business. George W. Payne, QC, MP, Minister of Housing, Lands, and Rural Development. Ronald St. C. Toppin, Minister of International Business and Industry. Dr. Jerome Walcott, JP, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. Trevor Prescott, JP, MP, Minister of Environment and National Beautification. Cynthia Y. Ford, JP, MP, Minister of People Empowerment and Elder Affairs. K. 
Kerry D. Simmons, MP, Minister of Tourism and International Transport. Dr. William Duguid, JP, MP, Minister of Transport, Works and Maintenance. Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick, MP, Minister of Health and Wellness. Edmund G. Hinkson, MP, Minister of Home Affairs. Dwight G. Sutherland, MP, Minister of Small Business, Entrepreneurship and Commerce. Wilfred A. Abrams, MP, Minister of Energy and Water Resources. Ryan R. Strawn, MP, Minister in the Ministry of Finance. Marcia K. Cattle, MP, Minister in the Ministry of Economic Affairs. Cheryl Sandra V. Husbands, MP. Charles McD. Griffith, MP, Minister in the Ministry of Housing, Lands and Rural Development. Adrian R. Ford, MP, Minister of Youth and Community Empowerment. Kirk D. M. Humphrey, MP, Minister of Maritime Affairs and the Blue Economy. Indar A. Ware, MP, Minister of Agriculture and Food Security. Peter R. Phillips, MP, Minister in the Ministry of Transport, Works and Maintenance. John A. King, MP, Minister of Creative Economy, Culture and Sports. K. S. McConney, Minister of Innovation, Science and Smart Technology. Lucille Simo, Minister of Information, Broadcasting and Public Affairs. Dr. Rommel Ospringer, Parliamentary Secretary, Ministry of Education, Technology and Vocational Training, and Neil G. H. Rowe, MP, Parliamentary Secretary, Ministry of People, Empowerment, and Elder Affairs. Ladies and gentlemen, the new cabinet of Barbados. Congratulations to you all. And now the work begins. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. We are going to shift the tenor of the program now that the cabinet has been sworn in. And we are going to invite one of Barbados's foremost musicians, Mr. Nicholas Branker, to render Amazing Grace. Please welcome him. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Nic Nicholas Branker taking us to church this evening. And we're going to stay there with the next performer, a young lady with an amazing voice, Miss Paula Hines. Here she is to render His Eye is on the Sparrow. Ladies and gentlemen, Paula Hines.
Amen. 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 Amazing Grace from Nicholas Branker and His Eye is on the Sparrow by Miss Paula Hines. Ladies and gentlemen, there's going to be a slight change in the program. We are going to now invite Bishop Jerry Seal, the presiding bishop of the Barbados District of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies, to address us. Bishop Seal. Your Excellency, Madam Prime Minister, with your gracious permission. You know, every family has that auntie or uncle that always knows what everybody should do and giving advice. Across Barbados, I am known as Uncle Jerry. So would you forgive me this evening if I move from here and if I ignore you and talk to these ladies and gentlemen, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, for the next nine minutes. You're about to see a miracle of Pentecostal preacher preaching in nine minutes. But I have a flight to catch. It was stirring watching you take your oath of office. You've come to our kingdom of Barbados at a very important time. We could perhaps quote the words said to Queen Esther, you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And we don't take that lightly. But I want to ask you, please live and serve with humility. You have an important job. You have people that are going to go when you say go and come when you say come and stand when you say stand and get out when you say get out. Don't let it go to your head. Remain humble. When you become puffed up with pride, we will take care of you. In Isaiah 57 and verse 15, God says, I will live in the high and holy place with those whose spirits are contrite and humble. With those whose spirits are contrite and humble. We need leaders who live in the high and holy place with God. Please don't take that for granted. A second little piece of advice I would like to give to you is to live and serve with integrity. If you have come for a piece of the fatted calf, may I suggest you're at the wrong table. If you've come to feather your nest, may I suggest you're plucking the wrong chicken. Amen? I promise you, and I promise you, that if that is what you are doing, I will pray, as I have done in the past with many others across this country, 
that God would expose you, strip you, and bring you down. And I, I promise you, I promise you faithfully, I will do that. This is not time to rob the treasury. In fact, in Isaiah 61 and verse 8, and let me quote Isaiah 61 and verse 8. I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. Please take the word of God seriously. Live and serve, number three, with understanding. In Proverbs 23 and verse 23, it says, Get the truth and never sell it. Also get wisdom, discipline, and good judgment. Above all, we need you to be men and women with understanding. And we are going to be praying for you along these lines. We are going to be lifting you up to God. We take this very seriously in the church. And we are going to be lifting you up to God. And we're going to be asking God to give you wisdom and understanding because, because these are difficult days. This 21st century is unlike any century that has gone before. What worked in the 20th century was good for the 20th century. This is the 21st. And you need wisdom. You need understanding. You need discipline. In 1 Chronicles 12 and 33, 32, sorry, it speaks about the sons of Issachar who knew what Israel should do. We need you to be like the sons of Issachar and know what Barbados should do. Lead us with wisdom and with understanding and we will follow you. Lead us with foolishness and we will use our ex. Just remember talking as uncle this afternoon, all right? And I'm going straight to the airport afterwards. <laughs> I want to ask you, number four, live to serve. You've been called to serve, not to lord it over us, but to serve. Jesus said, these are his words from the New Living Translation, from Matthew chapter 20 and verse 28. Jesus said, for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others, and to give his life as a ransom for many. If Jesus did not come to be served, what about us? If he came to serve rather than to be served, then that is our calling, to serve. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 said, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And finally, the miracle is unfolding. I've got finally. I just want to share with you as I close 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time, I have heard you. And in the day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And I'm not speaking there in a political sense. I'm speaking very much of the spiritual sense. I don't care which church you belong to. I honestly do not care which church you belong to. But I urge you, if you do not have a relationship with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, that you would enter into such a relationship because you will need his help as the months and years unfold in the tasks that you have just been assigned. And I urge you that you will reach out to him and let him be your guide. Let him be your Savior and let him be your Lord. God bless you.
Thank you, Bishop Seal. Words of congratulations, prayers, and warnings from Bishop Seal to the new cabinet of Barbados. And I now invite Prime Minister, the Honorable Mia Amor Motley, QC MP, to address you. Your Excellency Dame Sandra Mason, Governor General of Barbados, my colleague Prime Ministers from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Honorable Ralph Gonzalez, and the Prime Minister Keith Mitchell, Prime Minister of Grenada, Prime Minister Chastain, who has had to leave us, and Prime Minister Skerritt, who also joined us earlier today for lunch before coming here. Members of the Cabinet of Barbados. <laughs> members of Parliament, members of the Diplomatic Corps, specially invited guests, fellow Barbadians. Let me begin by extending a heartfelt welcome to my colleague Prime Ministers for joining us on this very special occasion. It is truly, truly gratifying to us that you have chosen to come, to take time, and to spend this day with us, and we shall forever treasure this gesture. Your presence here is a clear testament of the strength of the spirit of the Caribbean, and equally I give you my assurance that our government is eager to restore and reinvigorate its partnership with you in pursuit of our vital regional integration goals. Our constitution speaks in the Barbados Labour Party to the pursuit of regional integration. We have come here this afternoon to witness the swearing in of the new cabinet of Barbados and to wish them Godspeed as they set forth to work for the people of Barbados. We've also come here to celebrate with pride and emotion the unequivocal proof given to us on May 24th that in Barbados our democracy is strong, is resilient, and is very much alive. And so let me begin by saying thank you, thank you, thank you to every Barbadian. Thank you for standing up. Thank you for speaking out. And yes, thank you for showing up when it mattered most to demonstrate the astounding power of your vote. Because of you, our country has just seen the most emphatic and unambiguous expression of the will of the people in its history. Permit me to say, these fields and hills have resounded with the decisiveness of your message. You want change. You want a new direction. You want a government that recognizes that its purpose, yes, Uncle Jerry, is to serve. You want a government that is competent and courageous enough to confront the challenges that we face as together we begin the long walk back from the brink. And so finally, the new dawn is here. Collectively, the people of Barbados are amazed at what has been achieved, but none more so than your new government and your new cabinet. We are profoundly affected by the extraordinary strength of the mandate that you have given us, and we are equally conscious of the overwhelming responsibility now placed firmly on our shoulders. We acknowledge the solemn duty this demands of us, never to betray your trust, nor breach the sanctity of the covenant you have willingly entered into with us. For this, my friends, is truly a covenant of hope.
And it now falls to us to translate hope into action. As I have said to you before, there is no time for pause and there is certainly no place for triumphalism and exaltation. We have serious work to do and serious problems to solve. The dawn is fleeting and soon the full glare of the tropical daylight will be upon us. I have walked the length and breadth of this country these past few years and I have seen firsthand how much our nation has been battered, how dispirited our people have become. But spirits, my friends, can rise and wounds can be healed once we learn again to believe in ourselves, in our nation, and in the fundamental values which have shaped us both. In what my dear friend Dr. Gonzalez has so eloquently described, the idea of Barbados. Today, as your Prime Minister, I ask all Barbadians, all Barbadians, to accompany us on this journey out of the shadow of darkness and into the light. There is nothing wrong with Barbados that together with vision and determination, confidence and abiding faith and discipline that we cannot make right. And I say to you, look at the sky, look at the ocean, look at the sand, look at the people, feel the breeze. Everything that is not man-made is still working in Barbados. So we must get out there and work together with our families, in our communities, in our schools, in our places of worship, in our places of work. We can get there with transformational policies, transformational thinking, and transformational implementation. As your leader, you know me. I subscribe to only one brand of politics, the politics of inspiration. I believe that I've shown you that I know how to leave balls outside the off stump, and I shall continue to do so. And as for inspiration, we can, if we think we can, to restore and renew Barbados doesn't require just the commitment of the 30 of us. It requires all patriotic Barbadians making a determination that divisiveness and partisan tribalism must not be allowed to destroy this nation, must not be allowed to prevent talented people with ideas and capabilities from playing their meaningful part in nation building. We can and we will find the common ground to build the best Barbados together for everyone. And throughout this campaign that is now closed, I asked one night everything for you to remember that many hands make light work. It may be somewhat cliched because the truth is that this country belongs to all of us. But I know that when all of you recognize that we have been given this overwhelming mandate, some became anxious at the final outcome that their actions had produced and the results given at the electorate. I have already announced the steps that my government will take through a constitutional amendment to allow for the two opposition seats in the Senate to be filled by nominees from the main opposition political party securing the largest number of votes in their election in the election notwithstanding their failure to secure a seat in the House of Assembly. And I've had discussions with Her Excellency to ensure that we create this opportunity for their voices to be heard in our Parliament. That is in the Senate. As for the situation in the House of Assembly, 
you will clearly understand that I have no legal power to remedy that deficiency of their absence. Nor indeed would I wish to even try to do so. Because this abundance of riches derives directly from the expression of the will of the people whose infinite wisdom I wholeheartedly receive and accept. But I do, however, assure the people of Barbados that their recent generosity towards the candidates of the Barbados Labour Party will not be misused or abused. We have seen that it is sometimes possible even without commanding the totality of the membership of the House of Assembly for dictatorial and law-breaking tendencies to emerge. I give you this evening my solemn word that it will not be so with any government under my leadership. On the contrary, I have already warned some of my parliamentary members that if I ever find it necessary in the interests of fair play and balance, I am perfectly willing to convert myself into the most formidable leader of opposition to this government. For we now have an even higher duty to contend with, to transact our legislative agenda, to conduct our parliamentary debates in such a way so as to ensure that different perspectives and points of view are brought to the floor of parliament and to give the consideration they deserve. The absence of a formal opposition in the House provides my government with a unique opportunity to evolve other institutional arrangements for ensuring inclusive dialogue and participation by a wide cross-section of Barbadian stakeholders in the business of governance. These will include an innovative use of the committee system of Parliament to co-op external participation and input, and an enhanced consultative process with an expanded and re-energized social partnership. And through the structure of our proposed People's Assemblies and National Dialogues, we will also consider the introduction of question time, where members of parliament will respond to pertinent queries, not only by members of parliament, but submitted by members of the public. We are deeply conscious of the example set by Prime Minister Mitchell in managing a parliament and a country effectively in the absence of an opposition. In short, the checks and balances function that is expected of a parliamentary opposition can be carried out by you, the people of Barbados. So my friends, the government I have the honor to lead has pledged to uphold the highest standards of transparency and accountability, discipline and fairness. We therefore welcome and encourage that active public scrutiny of our performance, both in the legislative and the executive branches of government. And let me turn to the executive branch and the purpose that has brought us here this evening, the swearing in of a cabinet. You are already familiar with some of our more experienced members and in the recent weeks have been exposed to the capacity and talent of many of our first timers. The composition of the cabinet reflects a careful balance between experience and youth. Its size, as I have indicated previously and up front, responds directly to the enormity of the task we face in rebuilding Barbados and the urgency with which the cabinet must now act in leading the national response to and the prompt resolution of the mission critical issues outlined in our manifesto. Since its publication, three more matters have been added to it, leading to 20 mission critical matters that require our urgent attention in the days and weeks ahead of us. There will be deadlines for action and constant follow-up and evaluation. And I have made it clear, and do so again, that I will be holding the ministers of the Crown of Barbados to the highest standards of efficiency and productivity. 
The people of Barbados will accept nothing less. Neither will I. All cabinet ministers and indeed all members of parliament will subscribe to a code of ethics that will guide us in the performance of our duties. And pending the enactment of the integrity legislation which we have already placed and made public since November and the consequential establishment of an integrity commission, all ministers will submit a declaration of their assets in a document to be held under sealed envelope and in confidence by the cabinet secretary until the establishment of the integrity commission. The hallmarks, therefore, my friends, of this cabinet will be accountability, transparency, fairness, discipline, and unity. We do not and will not subscribe to the notion of government by stealth. As we declared in our covenant of hope, and I quote, you shall always have the confidence of knowing how we as a government will take decisions and how we will act in your name, unquote. No ministers will be signing important deals or contracts on your behalf behind your back or behind indeed the back of cabinet or without the mandatory advice or opinion of the relevant public service professionals and legal professionals. That is not how responsible government behaves. There will be no dodging nor hiding from the people of Barbados nor traveling the highways incognito. We will institutionalize the holding of regular post-cabinet briefings to keep the public informed and up to date on all major decisions, not only after they have been made, but where possible in the process of consultation in the making of decisions. To further enhance transparency, we will enact fit for purpose freedom of information legislation and will remove the current provisions in the general orders that effectively prohibit public servants, senior public servants, from engaging with the media. Our government must respond to the people of Barbados. But if we are to be a cabinet of fairness, then we must be prepared to lead by example. And so one of the first items of my cabinet's meeting and we will have two this week. The first one on Tuesday will be to ask this BLP team 2018 to continue to share in the sacrifices being made by our public servants and other sectors of this society. For the last year, as a matter of principle, these men and women joined with me as BLP parliamentary representatives and declined to accept the 10% pay which the previous government took back by legislation. We took a decision to have our back pay and our continuous 10% monthly pay go to charitable organizations such as the Salvation Army, the Diabetes Foundation of Barbados, and a number of other entities. On one simple principle, that we will not accept it until the public servants of Barbados issues relating to terms and conditions are appropriately resolved in this country. Consequently, I shall similarly recommend to my colleagues a continued commitment that that 10% will not be accepted until the public servants of Barbados receive their due. my friends under my chairmanship will be a cabinet of ideas of problem solving and of action but it will also be again a cabinet of collective responsibility I will encourage vibrant dialogue and healthy exchange of robust points of view but once we have discussed it 
agreed and decided the message we convey we will be unified and consistent because the country needs certainty from its government given the prevailing circumstances i know that we will have to make a number of tough judgment calls and very early in this administration in all things we pledge to act diligently and responsibly and to make decisions not on the basis of people's wants but first and foremost on the basis of the needs of our people always seeking at the same time to expand opportunity and to create greater equity in our society and let us be real sometimes we will make mistakes sometimes we will need to change course but when this happens i give you the assurance that we will always always level with you if we act in your name then it is your right to know and to understand always the reasons behind our decisions and our statements whatever the problems whatever the difficulties we will not conceal the facts unless it is a matter of national security my cabinet colleagues are eminently qualified energized and fully committed to the challenges ahead we are eager to work first thing from tomorrow morning in the full service of the people of this country indeed the situation was so urgent that we started on friday evening and our first action was for the attorney general myself and senator walcott minister strong minister cattle to hold a series of meetings dr maskell to be briefed on the economy and where we are this has allowed us to understand to begin to understand the scale of the dire situation in which we find ourselves tomorrow morning we shall meet with the social partnership and as i promised you and particularly in the absence of an opposition that i shall meet with the leadership of the social partnership twice a month until we have gotten barbados back to a position of safety and stability and similarly tomorrow afternoon after that we confront the issues of our debt and foreign reserves issues to allow all ideas to contend because we accept that our decisions and our action must now be urgent to stave off the worst after that similarly we meet with the south coast sewage issues i mention these things to let you know that the notion of mission critical things are not pretty words on a piece of paper but they are literally required by members of this administration literally from their first day in office and as to the rest of the week we will deal with the issues of getting buses and public transport back again we will deal with the issues of getting garbage trucks where the country has only a handful of trucks working the country and we will deal with each and every one of our commitments starting first with our commitment to the pensioners of barbados who we will secure the increases that we have promised my friends we will hit the ground running for we do not have as a country the luxury of time in my message in our covenant of hope i said then and i quote we must all of us agitate for more visionary compassionate and responsible leadership from all who would govern we must return to the values that sustained and distinguished us as barbadians the time for a new politics is upon us my friends you agitated we agitated and now the barbados labor party is your government it is therefore up to this team to reflect these values to become visionary compassionate and responsible leaders that we all yearn for and with your continued support and with your joining us on this journey from darkness into light and with above all else god's help we can we will we shall i thank you
Thank, thank you, Prime Minister Modley. Thank you for the commitment of the cabinet to the people of Barbados. And we now invite to the stage another talented young Barbadian musician, a graduate of the Barbados Community College Music Program, Mr. Wesley Morris. Mr. Morris is going to perform for you, hallelujah. Mr. Wesley Morris, ladies and gentlemen, doing hallelujah on his acoustic violin. And now we welcome to the stage another young man, somewhat younger than Wesley. <laughs> his name is Evron Briggs. He is a pupil of the nearby Bay Primary School. And Mr. Briggs will do the scripture reading, Psalm 4, verses 1 to 8. Mr. Evron Briggs.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Her Excellency, Dame Sandra Mason, the Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Mayor, and more Motley. Today's scripture reading is taken from Psalm chapter 4, verses 1 to 8. Answer me when I call to you, O God who declares me innocent. Free me from my troubles. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you people ruin my reputation? How long will you make groundless accusations? How long will you continue your lies? You can be sure of this. The Lord set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will answer when I call to him. Don't sin by letting anger control you. Think about it overnight and remain silent. Offer sacrifices in the right spirit and trust the Lord. Many people say, who will show us better times? Let your face smile on us, Lord. You have given me greater joy than those who have abundant harvest of grain and new wine. In peace, I will lie down and sleep for you alone. O oh Lord, will keep her safe. Mr. Evren Briggs. And while we're welcoming people from the nearby community, let's welcome the evergreen, Mr. Mark Lord. Mark is going to perform for us my country to me. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Lord. Congratulations to the Robert's Little Party and its Prime Minister. <laughs>
I thank you Mark too. Mark Lord and my country to me. And as is fitting on occasions such as this, we invoke God's blessings. And to do that, we invite the Reverend Michael Squires of the St. Matthew's Anglican Church to give the intercessions and the blessings. Reverend Squires. We remember at this time, Lord, our country, our leaders, our Governor General, our Sinsley, Dame Sandra, our Prime Minister, Honorable Mia Amor, all members of Parliament and the Senate, to all in administrative authority. O Lord, our God, whose glory is in all the world, bless the leaders of our land, that we may be a people at peace among ourselves and a blessing to other nations of the earth. Keep this nation under your care. Grant to the Governor General and all others in authority a deep sense of their responsibility to you for the opportunity you have given them to serve your people. To all who have executive authority. And to all who have administrative authority. Grant wisdom and grace in the exercise of their duties. Give grace to your servants, O Lord. And to those who make our laws, give courage, wisdom, and foresight to provide for the needs of all our people and to fulfill our obligations in the community of nations. Give grace to your servants, O Lord. To our people, teach us, Lord, to be patient and to rely on your strength to use our resources wisely and to your glory that all may share in your goodness. Help and comfort the lonely and aged, the unemployed. Keep homes united in their family life, giving them strength in times of anxiety. Guide us. Guide us in our responsibilities to do our best to fellow citizens for the well-being of our society. So in every heart, the true love of peace, guide us with thy wisdom that we may use our liberty in accordance with thy gracious will. O oh God, be our refuge and our strength. Now for our new Prime Minister and her government. Ever present God, you are the source of all wisdom and power, compassion and truth. Hear our prayer for the Prime Minister, Honorable Mia Amor. In all the opportunities and challenges she faces at home and abroad, Grant her judgment to discern what is right, a heart that is willing to listen, a commitment to do what is just, and a desire to seek the peace of our own country and the wider world. In all the responsibilities she carries, especially when difficult judgment must be made and difficult decisions taken, May she find in you 
her strength, and her peace. Hear to our prayer for the women and men appointed to serve in cabinet. We pray your guiding hand upon them that in their respective ministries, priorities will be established which enrich our common life. Protect people who are weak and vulnerable and address the issues of poverty and inequality which is so diminish or so diminish us. Uphold all of us in your grace and following your ways of truth and justice, set our land free from all bitterness and strife. And by the power of your love, help us to live peacefully with one another and with all your people the world over. To God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all glory and praise. Amen. For our Parliament, O God, the fountain of wisdom, whose will is good and gracious and whose law is truth, we beseech you so to guide and bless our members of Parliament, senators and representatives who are here assembled, that they may enact such laws as shall please thee, to the glory of thy name and the welfare of this people, to Christ our Lord. And for our country, Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech you that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of your favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable industry, song learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion us into one united people. Endure with the spirit of wisdom those to whom in your name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to your law, we may show forth your praise among the nations of this earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, Suffer not our trust in you to fail. All which we act through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. And now I invite you to pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, O daily bread. As we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Squires. Ladies and gentlemen, I now invite you to stand as we sing the hymn, I Vow to Thee, My Country, and to remain standing for the playing of the National Anthem of Barbados.
thank the band of the Royal Barbados Police Force. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of this evening's proceedings. Please allow the Governor General to take her leave. As she leaves, I remind you of the message sent to the people of Barbados today by the party victorious in the recent general elections. For Barbados to succeed, we need to unite. We need you to be a part of this transformation. We need your energy, your commitment, and your creativity to once again make Barbados punch above its weight. We are Barbadians. Let us work with a spirit of service and collaboration so we can rebuild our home together. I know that many of you are operating on a sleep deficit over the past few weeks. I ask you to be careful on the road, drive carefully, get home safely. There's work to be done tomorrow. Good night. And as Her Excellency, the Governor General Dame Sandra Mason, takes her leave, she offers a few more words of encouragement, I'm sure, to the Prime Minister, the Honorable Mia Amor Motley, and to the Attorney General, escorted by her aide de camp, Major Julia Dabreo. You've been watching live coverage of the swearing-in ceremony for the members of Cabinet and Parliamentary Secretaries. On behalf of our team, I'm Peter Aleen wishing you a good evening and thank you for watching.